n equal b j c z w bar w here j is one through n. So we ca we called this uh, quasi linear Cauchy Riemann equation. So solvability of this. So uh, th they are twin uh, equations. So let me just briefly tell you the idea, uh, very roughly the, uh, the idea. And before doing that, uh, so today is uh, all speakers are all Michigan PhDs. So <laughs> uh, either dance former PhD student or those who took courses from him. So. So t I want to explain why this is Michigan mathematics <laughs> uh, so, and how this, these problems and how I am related to Professor Dan Burns, um, so which is going to be quite a long story. Um, so uh, uh, okay, so let me start with. Um, the thesis problem uh, is this. That, uh, that was, uh, he, he told me in Then it was 1997, I think, so six or seven. So since then, I have been working on the generalization of Frobenius theorem. So then, we, uh, so I I gradually understood little by little. Uh, then uh, it was 2000. Four or five, okay. Around this time, uh, Sung Ho, where? Sung Ho, Wang. He was undergraduate students when I was there, a post tech. Okay. He was he is graduate of post tech. Then he later he got degree uh, at Duke. Uh, he worked with uh, Robert Bryant. So he came. So I asked him. Uh, I said to him that I'm working on the generalization of Frobenius theorem. Then he said, well, that's what Bryant, Bryant did, does. And he told students to do that. So, so he gave lecture on exterior differential system in Seoul National. He gave some eight lectures. So after that, uh, after that I, I made more progress on Frobenius theorem stuff. But I don't, I don't really know what I learned from him. But anyway, that helped. So, <laughs> uh, so this is all. Uh, so it is uh, my thesis. That's my thesis problem. First order system. First order <coughs> system of PDEs. So this is first order. Uh, first. So quasi linear. Okay. So. So let me show you the idea of this. Okay. And I, uh, when I visited uh, Rutgers Camden, so I, I gave talks on Frobenius theorem. And uh, so I, I wrote several papers on the Frobenius theorem and, and I gave talk in the presence of experts like Sung Ho Wang and many guys, Anderson, and including Bryant. And, and I, I asked, uh, is this really new? Did you know this already? <laughs> and they, they, they didn't say anything. So. <laughs> 
so this thing is same. Uh, uh, this is very elementary. That's 18th century mathematics, really. But we, we couldn't find this in the literature. But we don't claim this is new. Because it's so elementary, so we are not claiming this is new, but we wish there's some application of that, like control theory or whatever. So let me show you the idea of that. Okay. Uh, it is a classical method of method of characteristic. Method of so so solution, any solution, graph of any solution, it is made of uh, characteristic curves. So it is the union of characteristic curves. That's the idea. Then how, how can you uh, co construct that uh, by finding, by finding uh, first integrals, first integrals of characteristic vector field. So if phi is first integral, and if x is characteristic vector field, then this is first integral is a certain function which, uh, which does not change in x direction. So that's first integral. So phi called constant. Any uh, level surface gives, gives you a solution. That's, that's the classical method of characteristic. So I want to do this. So here, okay. So what is characteristic vector field there? This is system of equations. So I have this many characteristic vector field. So let x j b uh, a j lambda x lambda plus b j so this is j d d u this is vector field on r n plus 1 which is x u so we consider this vector field. Then the equation, uh, another way of writing equation is this. OK. Uh, so suppose, suppose <laughs> here's a graph of u, called u of x. So then, so then normal vector is minus gradient u1. That's normal to to this graph. Right. So, so minus or x j is equal to minus minus or here? This one? Where? First line. Yeah. yeah. No, this is plus, yeah. Uh, then the equation is this, simply, uh, xj dot product with minus gradient u and 1, that is equal to 0. That's another way of, say, of writing this, okay? Uh, so j is, j is 1 through n. That means this vector field <coughs> is tangent to, to this surface. Okay? So, that is characteristic curve. So each xj is tangent to tangent to the graph of solutions so or another. So it is situation of Frobenius theorem, right? So um, so. Uh, So let me state the theorem, okay, which is very elementary theorem. Yeah. Uh, definition, first definition. 
a, a real value, a smooth function, real value, smooth function phi, x u, is a first integral, first integral of vector field. If, so I could write this way, of course, this, okay, P. So that's first integral. But for computational reason, I want to use the equivalent expression, okay, the dual expression of that. It is this. So I assume this is independent. And let theta be uh, one forms independent one forms which annul annihilate these. Okay. So theta s. Let's. So this this is set of one forms which annul anni annihilate this this vector field. Then it is the same thing as saying that d phi is zero modulo modulo theta. In other words, d phi belongs to the idea generated by this. It's the same. So I want to work with this definition here. Okay. Then proposition is okay. Oh, okay. So proposition. This kind of thing is the, in uh, undergraduate level PDE book. Okay. So uh, if phi x u is a first integral, integral of the vector field, then or with with is u, u derivative is non-zero, then phi equal constant. This is implicit, sol implicitly solution. This is solution. Okay. Uh, I will, uh, I will prove this is easy calculus problem. So why is that? By implicit function theorem. Implicit function theorem. I can solve for u, okay. u, u. There exists u such that of phi of x u x equal zero. So differentiate this in x j. So phi of x j derivative plus phi of u by chain rule u of x j derivative equal zero for all j. And since it is, this is first integral uh, implies that uh, xj, you, you apply xj, then uh, it is zero. So xj a a j lambda phi of x lambda plus summation n lambda plus b j phi u equal zero for all j. Okay. So then here we substitute we substitute this okay so that's that is minus uh, phi of u u of x lambda derivative okay. then since I assume this is non zero so divide through this then I get summation a j lambda u x lambda summation in lambda plus bj equal zero, which which is the equation. So so uh, 
be this good if I know the first integral. But this is over-determined system, so such thing does not exist in general. But I don't need that much. This, this is too strong. So, so I can generalize the notion of first integral. So this much is enough. So definition. So weakened notion, uh, a smooth function, phi, x u is, has invariant zero set, zero set, uh, with respect to the vector field x1 through xp, if the definition is obviously this is xj, this one, xj phi equal zero, zero, not everywhere, but on phi equal zero. So that's enough. That's what I want, really. Then the same calculation works. Okay. So I only need this. But that is equivalent for computational reason. So here, so that for computational reason, I, u I use the dual definition to that. It is this. D phi belongs to the idea of uh, the zero modulo theta, but now you hear phi. So that is bigger idea. So this is much easier. So that's enough. Okay. So here, so I, I work with this. Then exactly the same calculation says that uh, so proposition so if phi is has invariant zero set invariant zero set then f with respect to this vector field then phi equal zero is implicit solution. So there's solvability, so I want to know whether there's, there exists a solution. So this is a solution. So actually, this is if and only if. Okay. So if necessary and sufficient condition is the existence of invariant zero, existence of function with invariant zero set. That, that's the problem. So the problem is finding in function with invariant zero set. So we, we, we could, uh, we have some algorithmic way of, of finding, finding this. So let me, let me briefly explain that, okay? How can I find this? How can I find first integral or function with invariant zero set? So <coughs> we do this way. Maybe I want to erase this. Okay. So, uh, I do this way, okay. So, a given vector field, so let it be this. Then, theta is one form. So, which annihilates this. So, P plus S is now n plus 1, the dimension of. So these are one forms in Rn plus 1, okay, which is the space of x and u variables. So, and, and this is independent one forms. Then I started with the sub-bundle, okay, spanned by theta linear span of this. So let's call it I. Okay. So this is sub bundle. Then the same object, let me put bar here, so that is the sub module of omega one, let me write this way. This is module of one forms on, on this. But this is local, everything is local. So, 
So I, I fix a, an open set of the origin, the neighborhood of origin of Rn plus 1. So, so everything, so this is module of one forms over U. So module, then the same object, this means this is ideal, algebraic ideal generated by, by, by this. So ideal of exterior algebra, exterior algebra of all differential forms on U. So take that. Then I started with I1, okay. I, I. So this module. Then apply D here, D. Then it, it, it is set of two forms. So, so it, it is something here, but it is not module homomorphism. Okay. But if I mod out, if I mod out by this, this, then it is, it is a projection. Then it is module homomorphism. So let, let's call it delta. Okay. So this is module homomorphism. So kernel of that, so let, let me call it one, okay. This corner of delta. And assume that it is a, a constant rank. So it, it is sub, uh, it becomes a sub bundle. So I have, so I have a sub bundle sub bundle or sub bundle of r okay yeah. or rather this way okay. if they are equal if if they are equal what, what does that mean that means d theta equal zero modulo theta so that's what this equal means it is frobenius condition if it is equal, then Frobenius theorem applies. So there are this many first integrals. Otherwise, I work on this. Okay. And we observe that if there's a, uh, if phi is a first integral, d phi belongs to this, but it also belongs to this. So I, I, I can work on this. If, they are, if it is different, then I work on this. Then I do the same thing. So start with one. Then there's one. Then take corner again. So it is, then it is R2. So if first integral exists, D phi also belongs here. If, if it is equal, that means this is Frobenius. So its rank is, is, I have that many first integrals. We keep on going this. So every time the rank decreases. So at a certain stage, we meet we, uh, at a certain finite step, I have this situation here. So that's so that that is called the. Uh, uh, this is Cartan. Then later, uh, uh, what, what is that? No, no, no. Uh, uh, Brian's teacher was oh Gardner, oh, Gardner, Gardner. Gardner. There's Gardner theory. Okay. So that new was called the type type of type of Parfian system. So given any Parfian system, such new uniquely determined okay, Parfian type of Parfian system. Theta. Uh, theta 1, theta s. So that's general theory. Um, and we could, Jong Do Park and I could develop the how to compute this actually algorithmically. So, uh, f so we, we could find the uh, given concrete uh, problem, we could find the basis of this. Then the uh, so that many 
But genetically, rank of death is zero. Genetically zero. So we could handle that case too. The, the rank of then if rank of this is zero, then this theory doesn't 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 give anything. So in that case. No, it doesn't mean, it, rank zero doesn't mean solution doesn't exist. Okay. Because, because of this, you know, the zero invariant set, then rank is zero, but such thing might exist. So uh, there's an algorithm of finding that. So what, how can I do that? I use this uh, this uh, definition here, d phi equal zero modulo this. So I use this. So I, I'm looking f I'm looking for such function phi. Okay. So how can I find that? Okay. So I do this way. That means d phi is linear combination of this. So this is one form that I look for phi, so A alpha, theta alpha, alpha is one, yes, plus some function, uh, so, uh, so phi, phi is a function, times some one form, certain one form, any one form, it is of this type, okay, phi is of this type, then, then apply D here, then I get zero, a alpha, d theta alpha, then modulo, this phi and theta. I have this. But d theta alpha, so set d theta alpha, but since I'm looking for the solution of differential equation, x1 through xn should be independent variable. So in other words, dx1, dxn should be independent. So express that so t alpha ij dxi dxj summation in ij modulo theta. OK, set, we set. Then that means that uh, Okay, so that means now zero is equal to summation a, a alpha t alpha ij uh, dxi dxj modulo theta. Uh, in, in, okay, for, this is true for all alpha 1 through s. Okay, in, matri in matrices, this can be written uh, this way, t theta 1, okay, zero. Zero. A one, A, 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 A S. Then here, uh, T is T alpha I J. So this is matrix of size S by N choose two. Okay. This size matrix here, T X one, T X two dxn minus 1, wedge dxn, modulo, modulo theta, okay. That is equal to zero, uh, modulo theta and phi, I mean phi, right? That, but this is all independent. That means, oh, Oh, uh, what what I'm looking for? Oh, okay. So that means this this vector must be in the null space of this. Oh, <laughs> so let me look for. 
So if you come out the seta pat jong the box what what how how do we do that uh, there's some there's certain uh, how can i find the uh, first integral on zero zero level only uh, if he belongs to so that so from linear algebra uh, well I cannot tell you the detail now right now but the roughly the idea is this just purely linear algebraically by looking at this matrix I can find the candidate of, of this all possible candidate of that then uh, those candidate is uh, is uh, is obtained from this, but T is T is the uh, this is torsion torsion tensor, but T is obtained by differentiating theta, so theta uh, theta co constitutes of this, right? So theta uh, is expressed in terms of a and b. So D theta is first derivative of that D theta gives my t in linear algebra quantity obtained by linear algebra of that is still first order derivative of a and then I f so candidate of phi is, is from there so it involves first derivative of a a's and b's coefficients then I differentiate again so this condition is, is really second order PDE system for this. So the condition is second order PD system for the coefficient. So that's roughly the idea. So and we, we could uh, we, we could develop uh, the algorithm of that. So we we send that paper to a, some uh, applied applied math journal. And then uh, let me briefly mention the how this is uh, there is a line by line analogy to complex case which which is still mysterious okay so let me just show you that okay uh, so the equation so unknown function is complex valued function now so complex complex valued function unknown function uh, of z1 through zn okay then the equation is cauchy riemann equation cauchy riemann that's cauchy riemann equation so perturbation so this is zero at the origin okay so J, K, C, Z bar, W, W bar. Equal B, J. Okay, this here, J, one through N. And Or, uh, or that's the equation, right? That, so, so this is over over determined system. Uh, here I assume this is small. Small means a j k the determinant of that. This is n by n matrix. So I assume this is well, then it okay. Then. Uh, we consider uh, consider C J bar. Let's, let's call it bar. It is D D C J bar plus 
A J K <coughs> K is one through M D Z K plus P J P J D W D W for J is one through N then Z N plus one let D W. Yeah. Okay. Then, then there, there exists uniquely determined, almost complex structure. Complex structure on C n plus one, which is C W. Okay. Oh, uh, such that. Uh, this is CJ bar CN. This is one zero vector. Okay. So, and I have been working on the uh, generalization, algebraic generalization of algebraic generalization of New London Nuremberg theorem. Uh, with uh, with Kang Hyuk Lee and Hae Son Kim, so so we there's uh, two uh, two papers on on this generalization of New London Nuremberg theorem, and we we made use of that, and exactly at the same fashion as uh, the real case, uh, we. We uh, studied how to find a uh, pseudo-holomorphic function. Pseudo-holomorphic function of, of this almost complex structure. We, this is function annihilated by this vector field. So pseudo-holomorphic function phi. Or I don't need that strong. Right? So the weakened, weakened notion is uh, Pseudo holomorphic, pseudo holomorphic on zero set, that's, that is enough. Okay? Zero set, which, which means Cj bar phi equal zero on phi equal zero. So, and uh, there is a strong analogy to the real case that the same algorithm works for, for this case. So uh, we analyzing the, here I worked, uh, so, okay, the same way, rather than working with uh, vector fields, I worked on theta one through theta, uh, theta n plus one, which is uh, one zero, one zero forms, independent one zero forms, then we thought of d theta alpha, d alpha, beta gamma, theta beta, theta gamma bar, modulo theta. So, that, so we thought of this uh, beta gamma. This is matrix of size n plus one by n plus one choose two, and purely linear algebraically. Uh, so this is uh, this is this is exactly same as Nienhoist uh, tensor. Nienhoist tensor. So if this is identically zero, then Euland the Nuremberg theorem applies. So there are n plus one. <coughs> Pseudo holomorphic function by Newland and Nirenberg theorem. Otherwise, we analyze, uh, so we think of, uh, so if this is rank zero, so Nian Ho is tense, rank zero, rank zero if and only if there exists n plus one pseudo holomorphic functions, that's Newland and Nirenberg theorem. So as rank increases, 
debt decreases roughly. So then we analyze that. So same way we could uh, we could find the, the algorithm of finding pseudo holomorphic function on zero set. So let me finish my talk. This and the uh, details are here. Yeah, thank you.